Welcome back to Cheddar's opening bell. President-elect Joe Biden is putting together his administration despite President Trump's continuing refusal to concede. I'm joined now by Charlotte Alter, national correspondent for Time. Uh, Charlotte, thank you for coming on. So last night, Joe Biden named Ron Klain, and it's his chief of staff. What do we know about Klain? Why this pick? So Ron Klain uh, is a longtime advisor to the president. He's somebody that's been in his inner circle for years. Um, um, he's somebody who is widely respected across the political spectrum. Uh, he, he has experienced with economic recovery uh, in the 2009 economic recovery in the administration. He's experienced with disease management. He managed the 2004 Ebola response for the Obama administration. Um, and, you know, he also had experience uh, as a top advisor to the Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, which is very important for a chief of staff. You'll remember that uh, Barack Obama's chief of staff famously sort of downplayed the importance of judicial appointments during the early part of Obama's term, uh, something that Republicans then capitalized on. So I don't think you're going to see Ron Klain make a mistake. Um, Joe Biden also tapped uh, at least a dozen staffers at major tech companies to help with his transition to the White House. Uh, many of them used to work for the Obama administration. Uh, what does that mean for any effort to rein in big tech? So it's important that these agency review teams that were just announced this week are not actually really going to be time White House staff. It's more like the teams that are helping to manage transition from one administration to another. Um, but I do think that, you know, listen, I never ran on uh, promising to rein in big tech companies. That wasn't really, really part of his speech. It's something that progressives are certainly going to demand of him. Um, but, you know, the Obama administration had a very cozy relationship with the tech industry, and it's like the Biden administration is likely to have some of that as well. I also, also think, you know, another aspect of this is that the tech industry is very different in 2020 than it was in 2008, 2012. And uh, there are big problems with the tech industry that I think even people within the industry understand. So I do think that the landscape is a little bit different this time. Uh, such great insight there. Um, Biden doing all of this in terms of picking a transition team, uh, despite the fact that he is reportedly being shut out of standard transition resources uh, because President Trump has yet to concede the election. Uh, how much harder does this make the process and how much harder will it be for Joe Biden on day one after the inauguration? I think it does make the process. And, you know, uh, Joe, um, George W. Bush famously, you know, one of the things that they realized after 9-11 was that actually the slowness of the transition uh, slowed down his Department of Homeland Security, slowed down, uh, you know, uh, the, some of the intelligence that was gathered around terrorism, and that the administration was sort of caught flat-footed when that happened because of a slow transition in part. Um, um, thing to remember about Joe Biden is that, you know, Donald Trump can kind of muck up the transition and try to slow it down, but Joe Biden actually doesn't need that much uh, training to get up to speed on how the White House works. He's, he's already worked there, there for eight years. He already understands what all the agencies can do. He already understands very into the bureaucracy of the federal government. And so I think that he is very likely to come I'm in already pretty familiar with how things work, even if it's a slow transition. Oh, that's a great point. Um, an advisor on his COVID task force has suggested some type of nationwide lockdown of four to six weeks would really help control the pandemic. And then also because it would control the pandemic, it would help revive the economy. Um, do you think that this is even possible um, and, and I guess when he's inaugurated, is it at that point already going to be too late? Uh, well, certainly the way the numbers are going right now, 
seems like we're in for a very tough winter. And by the time he's inaugurated, uh, you know, the way the cases are going right now, it seems like COVID may already be way out of control. Um, I do think that a lockdown of some kind is certainly something that they're considering. Uh, Biden has said from the very beginning that the number one priority of the first in office will be to get the virus under control. So I think that they're considering any and all options. Um, all right, Charlotte Alter, national correspondent for Time. Charlotte, really great insight this morning. Appreciate it.